G'day, and well, my name is Gordon Beef. I have to do it again. G'day, my name is Gordon Beef, and I'm happy to welcome you to the session today, which is GigaSmart and intelligence traffic handling, including application intelligence. So let's uh, step right into it. So on the agenda today, we're just going to go over the architectural overview of the product and the GigaSmart. Then we'll talk about some of the GigaSmart applications. Well, actually, we'll go through all of them briefly. And then we'll focus in on the application intelligence uh, feature that's, um, that runs on the GigaSmart. All right, let's start with the overview. So this is a, a very high level overview showing the visibility and analytics fabric. And the GigaView HC series products, which fit within the fabric and make up a big part of it, are the products that that are actually able to host the, the GigaSmart capability and the hardware. Then, and really that product consists of, okay, the physical um, appliance itself. And we also have a virtual cloud version coming out, um, well, it's actually out already, and we'll actually have more and more capabilities added to it. But for now, it's, it's really the HC series we're talking about here. Uh, and then, on top of that runs the GigaView OS, the operating system. And then on top of that is the actual GigaSmart capability. So that, that hardware platform, uh, which in the, in the, in the V series and in, in current now and moving into the future will actually be a kind of a software platform, will run various applications. And what we've done is we've, as you can see in this diagram, categorized them into three categories. And I'll talk some more about that uh, in the future slides. Now, if you look at the actual hardware appliance itself, so the HC series, the logical architecture, internally there's a flow mapping function. So some hardware that does that job. And it takes the traffic in and out through, through from one, one origination point and sending it out to a destination. But hanging off that is the GigaSmart function itself. And a GigaSmart could be built in, could be something that inserts in the rear, or it could be something that inserts in the front, depending on the model of HC series that you have. And it's all controlled from the CPU, which is running the GigaView OS. But the GigaSmart module is what really contains the GigaSmart functionality and uh, the software that's running on that as well, the software or firmware, I should say. And if you're wondering on an HC series what the capacities might be, uh, depending on the model you have, there are different modules and different engines available. And as you can see, different generations of engine. And, uh, and this table sort of tells you how many, how many engines there are per module, how many modules there are per chassis, and so on. And so you can work out pretty easily what your maximums are you can get to, for instance, an HC1 can have up to one built in and one front and two front modules. So that means you can have up to three engines in the box if you want. In the case of an HC2, there's one rear and there are four front modules. Uh, there's two generations of front modules, but uh, that's, that's okay. You can't stick them all in there at once. So uh, one, one rear and, one, and four front modules maximum. So you can have up to five engines in that chassis. And in the case of the AC3, you have four front modules that can be plugged in. In that case, uh, you think you might have four engines only, but actually there's two engines per module in the case of the AC3. So that means you can have up to eight engines per, uh, per chassis, if that's what you need. Right, so let's um, move on to looking at the smart, the GigaSmart applications themselves. So as I mentioned before, I, I showed one way of actually packaging up and, and categorizing the features. But let's start off from an operational categorization perspective. We can take a look at all the features that are available in the GigaSmart and think of them in terms of what they do in terms of operation. So is it, is it just a packet-based operation? Is it, is it session-based? Is it generating metadata? Or is it just there for tunneling purposes? So I've listed all the features here. Uh, some of them you may or may not be uh, familiar with. The, a, lot, a lot of the ones in the, the packet-based packet operations section 
the kind of basic things that we've had support for for a very long time uh, and the areas that tend to have the most development uh, tend to be in the session based and metadata generation uh, areas so this is this is one way of actually bundling the, the features together conceptually then the other way is the way that that's shown in that high level diagram is to think in terms of a kind of a functional uh, categorization so is it about some basic level of traffic intelligence so being able to expose the traffic and and get access to the traffic and present it in a certain way that's that, that allows visibility into the into the packets properly or in the case of masking to obscure certain elements of data or is it that you actually you want to get some intelligence into the applications themselves and so therefore things like application filtering intelligence application metadata intelligence and video data records these are all perfect examples of of application layer type of intelligence the third one is, is more about subscriber intelligence so this is where you've got the ability to single out traffic and associate traffic flows with specific users and whether that's in a sub server subscriber network or whether it's even in a, a large enterprise network that's running SIP RTP, so voice over IP or, or video over IP. Uh, we, we, can, we can do correlation of that of all, all the sessions associated with each user uh, from a subscriber perspective. And then the final one, threat intelligence. Uh, this is a very important one these days, being able to uh, to analyze um, for, for threats in, of traffic in the network and look for strange behaviors and so on. And so we, we offer now a threat inside sensor as part of GigaSmart that could be used to actually drive the, the metadata that's necessary for threat insight uh, as, a, as an actual um, product and function uh, to operate uh, as it does today. And then this is the kind of the, the final way of uh, bundling, uh, which is actually how we also offer it. This is an alternative way that we sell it. Instead of selling and offering each of the features uh, one at a time, you can actually buy these bundles and they, they, they're priced uh, quite attractively. So there's the core view, which is basically the core functions that we see basically nearly everybody would actually need, at least a, a large percentage of them. And then depending on what type of function you perform in your organization or what type of organization you are. So are you a net op network operations person? These NetView bundles, the NetView or the NetView Plus might be quite applicable to you. If you're a security ops, so if you're in InfoSec or, um, or SecOps, the Secure View and the Secure View Plus bundles can be very applicable. And then if you're a mobile operator, then uh, mobile view could be very, very useful for you. And on top of these bundles, then we have a, a couple of uh, additional a la carte types of applications as well, uh, which include SIP over RTP correlation and video data records. So this is the way we actually offer these um, in a bundled perspective. The previous slides just showed some conceptual ways to think of the the, the actual features, uh, but this is actually one of the ways you can actually purchase them. Then once you've decided what uh, what features you want, um, then and you may actually want to run them at the same time together. There's this section in the user guide which shows you how to combine GigaSmart operations. So which ones can be combined, which ones cannot. So if you go into that user guide, you'll actually see small X's in the boxes. Um, of the different features and then you can see which ones can run together. So um, this is a very valuable table if you're actually thinking of doing chaining of, of uh, specific functions or service yeah, service chaining in that sense. And then once you've decided which operations you want to do together at the same time on the same engine, you now would, would really want to understand the order of operations. So this here shows the actual order of operations, depending on which of the features you choose. So if you chose to do header stripping and masking at the same time, then 
the head of stripping would be done first and masking would be done second. And so that's, even though or, or you don't have to have every one of these functions to follow this particular order of flow, but uh, this is the order of operations if you have multiple um, features trying to be run at the same time. Okay, so that's about GigaSmart as a, in general as a whole. Now we'll dive into application intelligence. So application intelligence, uh, which was released over a year ago, has um, proven to be a really, really powerful uh, capability that a lot of customers are taking advantage of. And it allows you to, to really properly look at the traffic and identify the, the actual applications that are in there, not just a, a smattering of a few that you can actually detect, but we can detect well over 3,000, actually over 3,300 uh, different applications. And the ability to be able to extract that data and use it to determine how you want to forward traffic. And then be able to then, if you, instead of, of filtering, you may actually want to actually generate metadata and send the metadata off to the types of monitoring applications that take in metadata and don't take in raw packets, such as SIMS. So that's a really, really powerful capability. Now, if we start off by looking at the, the filtering and visualization. So first thing is basically being able to detect and visualize the traffic. So the applications, you know, any, any bi-directional flows, it'll detect anything up to layer seven. As I mentioned before, there's well over 3,300 3, applications supported and that number keeps growing. And, and these are supported out of the box. You don't have to do any configuration to allow this to happen. And, um, and you can define the signatures from a custom perspective as well. We do have that capability. Unfortunately, even though it'll detect the flows, uh, currently right now, it's not displayed. So any custom app you define is not displayed, but um, yeah, that, that'll be addressed sometime in the future. And then we've done the detection. So, and we want to actually filter on certain types of traffic. And it could be that you actually want to forward specific types of traffic that you're very interested in, or maybe there's certain types of traffic you're just not interested in at all. So therefore you can either, you can detect the applications to either forward on or to drop and not forward on. And you can detect all kinds of applications, as you can see in this diagram. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Dropbox, Netflix, YouTube, SAP, you know, any, any of these, any of these types of, um, of applications can be detected and then, um, and then forwarded on to their desired uh, destinations um, as shown in this diagram. So that, that's, that's what you can do with filtering. Now, when it comes to metadata, you know, obviously there's not, not all monitoring devices are designed to take in, in raw packets. And in the case of a SIM or, or, so, or even someone, you know, it's not just the tools themselves, but it may be someone wants to store records of, of all the data, all the traffic that's on the network, but they don't want to store all the raw packets because there's a lot of stuff in, in the packets that is just irrelevant, which makes up most of the volume of the packets. So by generating metadata, and storing the metadata only, you actually get a huge saving and at the same time have a full, full richness of, uh, of data that you need um, uh, anytime you need to look at it. And in the case of a SIM, we can actually help them get better view of what's going on in the network because as the visibility and analytics fabric, we are kind of the, the source. We, we can see everything across, all the traffic across the network and then we can actually then forward in and create the metadata for all of all of that traffic or just portions of that traffic, whichever is uh, desired. And the SIM doesn't have to rely on getting multiple sources from different elements across the network. Uh, we can actually be that single reliable uh, trusted source for that, uh, for that data. And here's some examples of some successful uh, digital applications. So one is showing a database type of example uh, where you can actually sort out and detect specific types of database uh, communications and queries that are going on. 
Uh, the, the second one is about file sharing examples. So being able to detect different types of file shares that are going on, those different types of applications such as Dropbox or Box. And, uh, and another one is in, in SCADA or ICS type of situations where being able to detect the different special unique applications uh, for those types of environments um, uh, that can be performed as well. Now, when you, when you support well over 3,300 applications, it's very easy to, to find these applications that um, are on most, most networks and there's very few that uh, we wouldn't be able to detect. And then the, the amount of metadata we can generate that you can choose from, you're obviously not going to want to have 5,000 different types of elements, but uh, you can choose, a, choose from well over 5,000 uh, metadata elements to include uh, within the metadata you receive. It's extremely powerful. And here's some other examples where, where if you're using SIM tools, the types of functions you can use this metadata for. You know, whether it's suspicious network activity, maybe you're just trying to get data exfiltration on, on DNS tunneling. Uh, maybe you're trying to find out what's going on in suspicious uh, user activity. Any of these types of things uh, can, be, can be achieved by using our application aware metadata, uh, feeding that into, uh, into SIM tools. Okay, well, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, if you want to learn more about App Intel and Gigasmart, uh, please go to any of these uh, links that I've put up here on this page. And uh, all these, um, some of them are web pages and some of them are actually data sheets. So um, should give you a lot of information uh, for what you need. And um, please don't hesitate to ask us if you have any more questions. All right, thanks very much and have a great day.